Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a robin in pastels. Now the first thing that I like to do with any of my portraits is get the background drawn in first. So whether or not it's a full background like this project here or whether or not it's more of a simple glow effect which I do for my pet portraits, I will always get that done initially. I'm using my pan pastels here because I want this effect to be nice and soft. I want my colour changes to be nice and gradual and the pan pastels blend beautifully. Now to apply that pastel to my paper, I am using a round shaped soft tool. Now this is my preference or the oval shaped because they've got a nice curved edge. This means there that I'm not going to get the harsh start and stop points that you can sometimes get when you use the square or the triangular shape. So this just means that I'm able to get a little bit more softness in my colour changes. Now as you can see here I'm building up my layers gradually. I wanted the top of this background to be nice and light and then it got darker at the base. But I didn't want to go too dark and risk me sort of making that muddying up of those layers. So when I work with pastels I'll always be a little bit more cautious and if I decide to darken that up I can do that with additional layers. So onto the robin, and like with any subject, I will start off with the eye first. I want to make sure that I've got the shape and size of the eye right, and then I can start building up my highlights. Now at times here, just like there, you saw I was using a putty eraser, and I'm now going to start to create a colour swatch. All of these things are something that I really want to show in terms of how to use the correct pencil technique, and then how to select colours based on what we can see in our reference photo, how to then mix those colours together to get that accurate colour. These things are something that I'm asked frequently on social media, so this lesson here is a perfect one for any artist new to pastels. Now the first thing, before I focus on building up my details, I want to make sure that I've got my base foundation accurate. Now I talk about this in all of my tutorials here on YouTube. My first priority is to map in my lights and my darks. I don't want to be adding details on top of the very first pan pastel base layer. So here, as I start to really build up that softness, I'm now building up a nice good foundation ready for the details. This is all a layering process. I do find that if the base layer or the first few layers are rushed, the details on top will not look as soft. So I always put a lot of focus and emphasis on those first two layers. Now the one thing that the real time version on Patreon focuses on for this section is how to maintain that lovely bright colour saturation. I want those oranges and yellows to be nice and vibrant, but I also need to get my contrast right as well. So in terms of the contrast, it's how bright or how dark that layer or pencil stroke should be. So for areas where those feathers do need to be darker, I use more of a darker reddish orange colour rather than a black. That there is really important. If I were to use black over those areas, I will end up creating a muddy layer and that's going to end up really affecting that bright colour saturation. So that there is something to pay very close attention to, not just when drawing feathers, that would also apply to any vibrant colours within fur or maybe flowers. It's just one of those things that really does need to give a little bit of extra consideration. Now as I start building up the feathers here on the rest of the face, I am going to be working more from dark to light. So I want to be making sure that I've got that slight blue reflection from the sky in, which I've also captured in the eye and a little bit on the beak. So I've added a little bit of a glaze. Now glazes is something that I use with pastels and also acrylics and basically it's just where you're tinting the colour of the details underneath. Now in order to do that with pastels you want to be making sure that you're applying really light pressure to that pencil. So really when I talk about a glaze it's just a very thin layer of a colour to adjust the colour of those details underneath. Now if you use a pencil to create a glaze and it almost covers up your details, that means you've applied too much pressure to that pencil. You need to really use the lightest pressure possible, just enough to glide over the surface. That there will be enough to keep those details visible, but you will notice that the colour pencil that you have selected is enough with that light pressure just to adjust the colour of those details very slightly. Now I have a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. And although I'm drawing feathers here, all of those tips and techniques in that video are also relevant. So I'm focusing on my three main pencil techniques. That is my fur direction or feather direction, the feather thickness and the feather length. 
So all of these things here are gonna depend on how we're holding the pencil, how sharp that point is, how much pressure is being applied to the pencil, all of those things here we need to give consideration to. So the length of the pencil strokes is going to be decided on how long the feathers are. And of course that's gonna depend on the type of bird that we're drawing. The feathers on the chest here are actually really quite short. So we just need to be making sure that we're not lengthening our pencil strokes too much because we'll end up with something that looks a little bit more like fur. Now you can also see how the feather direction has played a really important role in building up the shape of the bird's chest. So we wanna make it look like it's puffed up so that the way that we can achieve that is by curving our pencil strokes in the right way. That there is gonna to help to make this bird look three dimensional along with the contrast, our values, the lights and the darks. Now, when it came to working on the lighter feathers, this here is something where I'm working a little bit more differently than how I would with most portraits. So because the feathers on the left hand side here were particularly bright, I haven't gone down with too much of a darker base layer. This here is my preference because I can always darken up a layer if I need to in stages. But if I work with a darker base layer first and then I add my lighter details on top, I'm only going to be able to lighten them up so much. So when I have got a section of fur, feathers, whatever it might be, that is particularly bright, I will actually start from light to dark. And this is what I'm doing here. Now again, just like when I worked on the face, I am really making sure to pay close attention to how I'm building up my base foundation. One of the most common things that I see often is that details are added too soon. If the layers underneath are not correct and they don't have the softness, they don't have the depth, the details will not look realistic that we're putting on top. So this foundation process here, the way that all of this layering process comes together is so, so important. Now the one thing here to pay attention to is feathers are sometimes clumped together. They aren't necessarily individual lines. So you'll see here that some of the feathers are curving down towards the lower left corner, others are curving down towards the lower right corner. It's all gonna depend on how that feather is grouped together. So this is something again that I pay close attention to when looking at that reference photo. Now the light source of any reference photo is something that should be captured accurately. So for this bird, it's mainly coming from the left hand side. So as we start to work on the right hand side, my base foundation now has got significantly darker. This here is now going back to my normal techniques of working from dark to light. The important thing here is I'm building up my layers gradually. So I haven't started off with a white pencil to map in those feathers first. I wanna be making sure that I'm doing it in stages. Now going back to the light source here, that's really, really important. The way that those highlights and shadows are hitting that subject are gonna to help to make it look three dimensional. We could have a really accurate and precise sketch and the original outline, but if we start to put the placement of the highlights and shadows incorrect, that will then adjust what that animal looks like. Now, when we're working with photorealism, that is obviously something to pay very, very close attention to. With pet portraits, the way that that animal looks, the expression, all of that can be adjusted just purely by where the highlights and shadows are placed. Now something else that I talk frequently about in all tutorials here on YouTube is the importance of drawing things in the right order. So I had to stop working on the whiter feathers because some of those feathers overlapped or were in front of the wing and the tail. So I now have to work on this area first and then I can, as you can see here, go back in and add those lighter feathers on top. This automatically also helps to build up that three dimensional shape of the subject because I've drawn what's behind an element first and then overlapped those details on top. So it is all about judging that reference photo, whether or not it's fur or feathers and looking at which bit is on top and which bit is behind. That there's gonna really help. So this section of the tail was actually out of focus. So the one way that I'm gonna achieve that easily is to make sure that I'm working with fairly blunt pencils. The sharper the pencil, the more likelihood we have of adding in more details, which for an out of focus area like this, we want to avoid. So that there is something that is, is really useful. And then I can go back working with my sharper pencils as I am here for those finer in focus details. So in order for me to work with this number of layers, which I do feel is the best way of adding more depth and realism to the portraits, I have to work with a paper or a surface that allows for that. 
So this is why I like to use Pastel Matte by Claire Fontaine because any of the other pastel papers that I've tried, they just don't grip the pastel in the same way. So you're not able to build up the depth. You can't use as many layers. You'll end up filling the tooth of the paper. All of these things, sometimes any artist new to that medium might think that it's the technique that they're using and that they're not able to work with that medium. But often, if it is the paper choice there, that can be really frustrating. So the pastel mat would definitely be my choice. Now in terms of the pencils, I would recommend the Carbo Fellow set is a great set to start with. They're soft enough that allow for really nice blending, but you can also sharpen them to a fairly fine point and you can use them for details as well. Now when it came to working on the feet here, this is where the sharp pencils really did help. So I'm using mainly here my Carbo Fellow and the Pit Pastels. The Pit Pastel pencils are a bit more of a harder lead, so you can see there that they're able to keep a really nice fine point, but you do also need to be using light pressure. Because pastel and the lead is a little bit softer, you are gonna have that chance of breaking the tips of those pencils. So when you're working with those really nice fine points, light pressure is key. Now when I started working on the feet, I literally just broke this up into the shapes that I could see and my lights and my darks. I didn't think of this as drawing bird feet because it wouldn't have looked like the reference photo. So these do look very odd. I think any feet, hands can look um, a little bit bizarre in the early stages. So if you do just break it up into your main lights and darks and just focus on the shapes, I find that it's so much easier to get more of a realistic look quicker because I'm not focusing on for what it actually is and that's exactly what I've done here. By putting in those lights first and then breaking it up into each individual toe, I never once rushed that process or put one colour down for the very first layer. I really did take my time. That meant that the, the bird feet were not anything that caused me any stress, which that is something that can happen with elements like that. So I do find if you break it up into really small chunks, one toe at a time, it makes it much easier to tackle. So I do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference to my channel. And if you would like to draw along to the real-time tutorial, then you do get the reference photo, line art and full material list on Patreon. So if that is of interest, I'll link that in the description below. If you've got any art-related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I do upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. As always, thank you so much for watching.